The operations of sampling and reconstruction are essential for using a computer to manipulate or store the kinds of signals we encounter in the physical world. So the objectives of this video are to introduce some of the key concepts involved in converting signals from the continuous types of forms that we find when we measure them in the physical world to forms that are compatible with computing. We're also going to look at converting those computer representations of signals back to a physical form, such as a voltage. So the kinds of signals that we encounter in the physical world, sound, light, vibration, well, they are continuous in both time, or the independent variable, if we're talking about a spatial signal like an image, and they are continuous in amplitude. That means that at any point in time, they are defined, and the amplitudes can take a continuous range of values. Now, computers work and store finite precision numbers. So this continuum in both time and amplitude is incompatible with storage and analysis by a computer. So what we're going to do is collect values of the signal at distinct times, say intervals spaced by t sub s, so that would mean we evaluate the signal at times t equals minus t sub s, 0, t sub s, 2, t sub s, 3, t sub s, and so on. And then we're going to represent the value at each of those times with b bits. And that gives us two raised to the b power distinct amplitude levels that we can describe. So let's take some examples. CD format audio is sampled at 44,100 samples per second. So T sub S would be 1 over 44,100. And each of those samples is a 16-bit number. So the sound pressure is measured by the microphone, converted to a voltage, and that voltage is converted to a 16-bit number. A typical digital camera might have 5,472 by 3,648 samples taken on a 36 by 24 millimeter image plane or chip. That would be a 20 megapixel camera. And each of those samples would be recorded at 14 bits. So this process of converting from a continuous amplitude and continuous time or space signal to these samples that we can represent in the computer is called analog to digital conversion. And the device that does the conversion is called an analog to digital converter. So what happens is we take a continuous valued voltage and we apply that to the analog to digital converter. And it is going to give us a set of samples that are at distinct times. In this case, we're showing them spaced by T sub S. And each of those samples may not get the amplitude exactly right because we're using a finite number of bits. So if I have a voltage that is not exactly represented by B bits, then I'm going to represent that voltage with a number that's very close to the value, one that I can describe using the 2 raised to the B power levels that I can represent with B bits. So we have samples in time, and then the amplitude gets quantized. Now going forward, we're going to consider the effects of sampling in time and of amplitude quantization separately. And the mathematical model we're going to use for sampling in time is to describe a signal x with square brackets as a function of n. And these square brackets denote that this signal is only defined at discrete values of n. And we'll define that signal as taking the continuous time signal, which is represented using the curved parentheses. And we're going to take that signal and evaluate it at times n t sub s. So x of 0 on the left is x of 0 on the right. And then x of 1 on the left is the continuous signal x at time t sub s. x of 2 on the left is the continuous signal at time 2 t sub s, and so on. So that's the sampling in time, and that's our notation that we're going to use to represent that. Now, it's really important to note that when we do this sampling process, we're throwing away information. 
we're discarding everything about the signal that happened in between the sample times. And as a consequence, there are many signals that have identical samples. So I've sketched in, in brown, x2 of t, a second signal that goes through the same sample values as x1 of t, the one I originally drew in black. So this, you can imagine, could be a potential problem. And there's something called the sampling theorem that tells us how to choose the sampling interval t sub s to ensure that we uniquely represent the signal. And that's particularly important if you want to convert this signal back to continuous time after you've sampled it. Now reconstruction is that process of converting the signal back to a continuous time and amplitude representation. And that's also called digital to analog conversion or D slash A. So there we're taking the numbers that are stored or obtained from the computer and we're converting those back to a physical quantity such as a voltage which may eventually get converted to something like a sound pressure using a loudspeaker. Examples we have mp3 or cd format music. That music is stored either on a disk or in the computer as a sequence of numbers and those numbers get converted back to a sound that we can listen to using this process of digital to analog conversion. In diagram form, if we have these samples at different indices n, those are x of n and those represent amplitudes, we can put those samples into this device called the digital to analog converter and the sampling interval and what we obtain at the output is going to be a continuous time signal that corresponds to these samples. Now the way digital analog conversion works, it's essentially a process for connecting the dots. We're going to connect the sample values with a smooth voltage. And one very common way to do that is to take these numbers represented by our discrete time signal and we put those along with the sampling interval into a device called a zero order hold. Now what the zero order hold does is it takes these numbers and it puts out a voltage proportional to those numbers and it just holds on to it. So at time zero, it puts out a voltage proportional to x at time zero, and it holds that voltage until time t sub s. At time t sub s, it puts out a voltage proportional to x of one on the input side, and it holds that voltage again for a length of time t sub s. And this produces a stair step type signal that has these constant values which correspond to the numbers representing the signal in the computer. Now most signals in the physical world are not stair-step signals. And so there's another stage to this digital analog converter and that involves something called an anti-imaging filter. And this is an electrical circuit that smooths out the stair-steps. It's what's called a low-pass filter and I take this voltage xz of t which consists of these constant values being held for intervals of t sub s and then this filter smooths out these transitions and produces a continuous valued signal in both amplitude and time. 